So a while back we did a video on how to get good looking graphics in Unity. But since then there's been some major changes to how we work with graphics in Unity. And at the center of these changes is a brand new rendering engine. It's called the Scriptable Render Pipeline or SRP for short. SRP allows us to either choose a pre-made rendering pipeline provided by Unity or to write our own c -sharp code to customize how things are rendered. Because SRP is so modular, it can both be used for games that should run on lower end devices and for games that target AAA hardware. In this video, we'll be working with HDRP or the High Definition Render Pipeline. We use HDRP whenever we want to achieve optimal rendering quality. So in this video, we'll turn this horrible looking scene into this just using HDRP. Also, this video is sponsored by Unity. Now, before we get into it, we've been working on some new designs for Line of Code and they are finally here. <laughs> we worked together with Blackthorn Prod, who is just an amazing artist and game developer to create these four cool looking shirts. I think my personal favorite is the heart one. It's just so cute. But that is not all. We also have this really cool new design by Thea and a new Game Jam one in collaboration with Mortmort. And on top of that, we've gotten a lot of requests to bring these designs onto female fitted shirts. So we've of course gone ahead and done that as well. So simply visit lineofcode.io and use the coupon code SHIRTMEUP to get 10% off for the first week. Also, if you're like me and absolutely love everything that Blackthorn Prod does, he does have his own YouTube channel and is even on Udemy with some beginner courses. Also, before we get started, special thanks to Jack Dubert, Andrew Kalinenko, John Shannon and Infinity PPR for their support on Patreon. Alright, let's jump into the video. So as you can see, I've gone ahead and set up this simple example scene. In here we have some models from the Mayan Temple Pack. I'll of course have a link to where you can download these in the description. I've also gone ahead and set up a few lights. We have two directional lights as well as a few point lights scattered around the scene. And finally we have this door light which is just an emissive material. Also if I go ahead and hit play you will notice that the camera... What the f Also if we go ahead and hit play you will notice that the camera rotates around our scene. That's because I've gone ahead and created a turntable object here that has a script on it that will simply rotate the camera over time. But of course, currently our scene is looking really bland. So let's go ahead and modify it to make it look better. The first thing that we want to do is make sure that we have the HDRP package installed. So we'll go to Window and open up the Package Manager. And as you can see, I already have the High Definition Render Pipeline here. If you don't see it on the list, make sure to go under Advanced and check Show Preview Packages. Simply find the package and install and update it. I'm using version 4.9. And with that, we're ready to start setting up HDRP. And the first thing that we need to do is creating a render pipeline asset. So we'll go to the project and right click. We'll go Create. Let's go under Rendering and select High Definition Render Pipeline Asset. Let's just call this HDRP. And with this asset selected, we will get a bunch of rendering settings. More specifically, we get to choose what features we want to include in our render pipeline. In here we have options for screen space ambient occlusion, subsurface scattering, <laughs> volumetrics, and so on. For now, we'll just leave these as is. We then need to assign our render pipeline asset to our project. To do that, we'll go Edit, Project Settings, and go under Graphics. And here you can see we have an empty slot for a render pipeline asset. So let's go ahead and drag in our new asset and voila, our project is now using HDRP. However, if we look in the game view, we can see that we still have a few steps to go. The first thing that we need to do is go to player, go under other settings and rendering and here we'll change the color space from gamma to linear. The color space determines the math used by Unity when mixing colors in lighting calculations or reading values from textures. Changing the color space can have a drastic effect on the realism of your game. A big advantage of using a linear color space is that the colors supplied to shaders will brighten linearly as light intensity increases. With the alternative gamma color space, brightness will quickly begin to turn to white as values go up, which often leads to a very washed out looks. So in other words, for more lighting fidelity, we choose linear color space. Of course, we can't really see this change yet because all of our materials are currently appearing in this weird purple color. The reason for this is that we need to update our materials to use an HDRP shader. So let's close down our project settings and let's find one of the materials in our scene. I have a folder with mine here and I'm just going to select one of them. And as you can see, it's currently set to use the standard shader. So let's click on this. Let's go under HDRP and let's choose the lit shader. 
And right away we can see that all objects with this material assigned appear in our scene. You could of course go through all materials in your project and update them one by one. But if you have hundreds of materials that might take quite a bit of time. Luckily Unity has put in an option for exactly this. If we go to edit, render pipeline, there's an option here to upgrade project materials to high definition materials. Let's simply click that, let's hit proceed. And voila, it's gone ahead and changed the shader for each one of our materials. Awesome. So the next step is to update our lights to look good with HDRP. So I'll go ahead and navigate to my lights here. And let's go ahead and first disable all lights except our main light. If we select this light, we get a bunch of settings that allows us to configure it. I'm going to go ahead and set the intensity of the light to 3 lux. And I'll leave all the other settings as is. Now we can re-enable all of our other lights. And you'll see that we get this error in the console. It says that Cascade Shadow Atlasing has failed. Only one directional light can cast shadows at a time. And this is a rule for HDRP. But currently I have two directional lights. The main light and the rim light. And the rim light is also set to cast shadows. So I'm going to select it and go to shadows and simply disable shadow maps. If we then clear our console, we can see that the error disappears. And we now also have nice looking shadows in our scene. I'll set the intensity of this light to 3 lux as well. I'm also going to select all of our point lights and set their intensity to 2000 lumen. That definitely helps and brightens up the scene a lot. So once we're happy with our lights, we are ready to start configuring scene settings. And to do this with HDRP, we basically create an object with a volume settings component. So inside of our hierarchy, let's go create, let's go under rendering, and let's select the scene settings. As you can see, this creates an object called scene settings with a volume component. And this component has a bunch of different settings. Let's go through these one by one. So the first one is our HD shadow settings. This is of course responsible for showing high quality shadows. The main thing that we can modify here is the max distance, which defines how far away we want to draw shadows. You can see if I set this to something like 40, it's only going to draw shadows up to 40 units and then stop. I'm just going to leave mine at 500. Next up, we have the visual environment. And this is where we choose two key parts about our scene. We choose what kind of sky we want to use and what kind of fog we want to use. As you can see, if I disable this, we just get a completely black environment with no fog or sky. So for the Skype, we have three different types. We have a procedural sky. This is generated to fit the scene and reacts to lighting changes in our scene. This is the one that we are going to be using. We also have an HDRI sky. This allows us to specify an HDRI map, which is basically just a very large texture for your sky. Finally, we have Gradient Sky, which allows us to create a sky based on three colors. So for now, we'll leave this at Procedural Sky. And you'll notice that we also have this Procedural Sky module here, where if we open this, we can configure settings for our sky. I'm going to go ahead and disable the sun disk, since I don't want any sun appearing in my environment. We can also adjust the sky tint. We could, for example, tint it red or any other color that you'd like. I'd actually like to tint mine a tiny bit red. We can adjust the ground color here. Let's for example make that blue. We also have an option for exposure and so on. So once you're happy with your sky, we can collapse this. And next up is the fog type. Here we can choose between the default exponential fog. We also have a linear fog and something exclusive to HDRP, which is the volumetric fog. This one is super cool. Let's go ahead and choose this. Right away you can see that our scene becomes black. That's because we need to go ahead and remove our exponential fog here. And instead we want to add another component override. And here we'll choose the volumetric fog. And for this we'll go ahead and change the base fog distance. So I'm going to select that here. And let's go ahead and update it to something like 80. We can also go in here and change the base height. Let's set that to 1. And the mean height, let's set that to 4.5. And as you can see, we are now seeing volumetric lighting in our scene. Each one of our point lights are now visible from within our scene. You can see their origins. And if we go into the scene view, we can see that really clearly around each point light, we are seeing the light react to the fog in our scene. And we can even start to see God ray like shadows in our environment. Really, really cool. 
And just like with anything else, we can of course change the color of this. So if we go to the single scattering albedo here, we can even adjust the color of our fog. So I'm gonna set mine to this bluish color here. I just think that looks really cool. So the next thing that we can configure is our quality settings. To do this, we'll go to edit. We'll open up our project settings once again. We'll go under quality and here we have some different quality levels. Let's go ahead and bump this one up to ultra. And you can see the most important thing that changed here was that our textures started to look much better. That's because our texture quality is now set to full resolution. And isotropic textures is now set to forced on, which compared to per texture will avoid weird stretching and blurring for your textures. So that already looks much better. The final big thing that we can add to our scene to really help tie everything together is of course post-processing. To add post-processing to a scene, we'll go to the hierarchy. Let's right click and create an empty object. Let's just reset the transform on this and let's call it post-processing. And here we want to add a post-process volume. Let's set this to global to make it affect our entire scene. And we'll also go ahead and add a new profile where we can add effects to our volume. In order to enable post-processing, we also need to find our camera and on here we need to add a post-process layer component. And on this component we need to choose what layers to search for post-processing in. So by default this is set to default. Let's go ahead and add a new layer called post-processing. Let's select our post-processing object and assign it this layer. And let's go to our main camera and choose this layer. Also when we already have the main camera selected we can go ahead and add some anti-aliasing. So anti-aliasing is the process of reducing jagged edges. It adds interpolation to try and smooth out stair step like lines. And we have multiple modes to choose from this. Which one to choose depends on the result you're after. I really recommend you experiment with these for your game. In my case here, I'm gonna go ahead and select SMAA. And now if we go to our post-processing object, we can start adding effects. So on this volume, we can add all kinds of post-processing effects to change the appearance of our game. I'm not going to go in depth with each of these effects in this video, but I'd love to do a dedicated video on it in the future. But there's definitely one effect that I'd like to add here and that is color grading. Because one thing that is important to understand is the tone mapper. So when using HDRP, our cameras are automatically rendering in HDR or high dynamic range. HDR allows us to store color data with much greater precision, which means that we won't lose detail in very bright or dark areas. In other words, bright things can be really bright, dark things can be really dark, and the details can be seen in both. However, we still have to define how all this extra color data should be displayed on screen. This is where tone mapping comes in. We can either choose to configure the tone mapper ourselves or choose from a preset. To do that, we go under tone mapping here, enable that. And as you can see, there are two presets here and custom. The neutral tone mapper, as the name suggests, gives a very neutral look, with minimal impact on color hue and saturation. The ACES tone mapper is more filmic, and will produce a much more contrasted look, as you can see here. In my case here, I'm gonna go ahead and set it to ACES, since I really like the look that this gives our scene. I'm also going to go under Tone, and set the post exposure to 1, just to brighten the scene up a bit. The next effect that I'd like to add is a bloom. So I'm going to go under here and add a bloom post-processing effect. I'm also going to go in here and increase the intensity. And as you can see, this is going to add glow to bright areas. This is especially important for our emissive material. If we go under the lights here and select the door light, as you can see, I have this glow material applied. And under emission here, we can configure the intensity of this emission. So I'm going to go ahead and increase this. And I'm also going to tint it in a cool color like blue. Of course, this is currently way too strong, so let's go to our post-processing and decrease the intensity. There we go. I think that looks really cool. I also think this thing could use a vignette, so I'm going to go and add that as well. Again, I'm going to override the intensity here and increase that a bit. And finally, because our scene is moving, let's go in and add some motion blur. And I think the default settings will work fine for this. So if we now hit play, we can see that we have a much, much nicer looking scene. And it's just by changing a few settings in Unity. Awesome! Finally, a really cool thing that I want to show you is the Render Pipeline Debug window. So if we go to Window, Analysis, and choose Render Pipeline Debug, 
we get this new separate window. And we can use this to display all kinds of really cool information about lighting, materials, and rendering. If, for example, we go under lighting here, you can see that we have an option called lighting debug mode. If I go in here and change this to diffuse lighting, it's only going to show the diffuse lighting happening in our scene. We can do the same thing for specular lighting and many more. If we set this to none, we can also go in and override properties for our materials. We could, for example, override the albedo for all of our materials, which means that we can just give all our materials a single color. This is really cool because if we choose a neutral color like gray here, we can see how lighting is affecting our scene without having to look at all the textures. In fact, we can also override other properties like smoothness if we want to see how our scene looks when it's really shiny. I don't know when you would use this one, but it's really cool. So I definitely recommend that you check in with this debug window while you're building your scene to make sure that everything is looking good. That's pretty much it for this video. Of course, there's so much more to HDRP than what can be crammed into a single video, from subsurface scattering to reflections. But hopefully you should now have a place to start exploring. And if you want to learn more about HDRP, we'll of course have a link for that in the description. Also, make sure to check out Line of Code and all of the new cool designs. Simply click the link in the description and use the coupon code SHIRTMEUP to get 10% off. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in January, and a special thanks to James P, Jack Schubert, Andrew Kalenko, John Shannon, Infinity PBR, Cyborg Mummy, Dennis Sullivan, Travis Dillon, Faisal Marify, Leo Lissette, Ronin, Clinton Vanskira, Chris, Gregory Pierce, Kill Sviduski, Rob Farron, Tim Folderbach, and Erasmus. You guys rock!